All right, hello again and welcome everyone to G Squared Academy where you know excellence is invariably epitomized. So um, first of all, let me thank you guys for all the likes, the shares, the subscribes, the comments, all the interaction um, that you guys have been doing with the channel. Thank you for that. I'm really appreciative of all the, you know, the support that you have been giving me. Right, um, so we proceed. As you can see on the screen, I'm going to be looking at an enzymatic activity planning and designing, right? Um, and uh, for quite some time, somebody had asked me about an enzyme lab, and I'm just going to do this version one um, for you guys today. Hopefully, it will help you. So here we go. This is the problem statement, which um, I really dug deep to fabricate this sort of problem, problem statement, you know what I mean? So Jane had a fever, which her mother um, tried very hard to get down. And when she got better, Jane went to school and the teacher said during bio class that enzymes do not work well at high temperatures. And so Jane wondered if um, this was the reason why her mother was working so hard to bring down her fever. Um, as she then wondered if other temperatures would make the enzyme work better. So your task now is to help Jane to solve her problem, which is wondering if enzymes work better at other temperatures. Now, invariably for all labs, if you have any problem with your lab and how to write up the lab, then you can check out my video there. Um, it will, she should be coming up now on how to write up a planning and designing lab. Right. Um, so you can check that out. So the first thing we want to do is get our hypothesis. Right. Hypothesis. So here is the hypothesis that I'm going to be working with. Now, for you to get your hypothesis, um, if you haven't, if you don't know how to do that, you can also check out my video on how to determine a hypothesis or how to ace your hypothesis, which is coming up right there now. Right. So extreme temperatures will cause enzymatic inactivity. However, um, at normal temperatures, enzymes will work optimally, all right? So basically, all we're saying is that um, at extreme temperatures, you are going to have enzymes not working. So too high temperatures, so extremely hot or extremely cold, the enzymes will not work. But at nominal temperatures or normal temperatures, the enzymes should work normally, all right? So how do we go about this thing here now? Right. So what are the things that we need for this? For what I chose to do was to use um, yeast and glucose. So I'm using yeast and glucose to do my reaction. Yeast contains an enzyme called zymase, and it can work on the glucose anaerobically to produce um, ethanol and carbon dioxide. I will then collect the ethanol. So you must have some idea of how to conduct your lab. It can't be that you know nothing really. You must have some idea, right? So this is my setup, really. My reaction mixture there would contain the, um, the reactants and then the gas syringe to collect. I need a balance because I'm probably going to be weighing my yeast and my glucose, um, a beaker. Um, this, is, this right here is a water bath because I'm going to be measuring at different temperatures. So I need like a water bath for that purpose. Measuring cylinder, just your usual stuff. And of course, I'm going to need yeast, which apparently you can get um, relatively easily. And um, I'm going to be using glucose as materials, right? So what are my variables? And of course, you can, you, there are four variables and you can check those out as well if you have any problem with that. So my variables, my manipulated variable or my independent, the temperature of the reaction. This is what I'm investigating. I'm investigating, I'm investigating how temperature affects um, enzymatic activity, right? So this is what I'm changing, temperature. Okay, then what will, what will be affected by that would be the volume of the carbon dioxide produced. So how much CO2 we get? Then what are we controlling? What must we keep constant so that our... Um, or reaction is fair. And there are a number of things. You can choose one. Your examiner usually only wants one. I've given you a number here. The mass of the yeast, um, pressure surface area, the mass of the glucose, etc. all of those things. Then now we want a control. Enzymatic activity, you could say it is a biological, well, this yeast is biological, but you could say that enzymatic activity really belongs to the biological sciences. So when you're doing your biological science lab, 
you want to use a control, which is what you're going to compare results to. So what we're going to do is set up a reaction mixture at 37 degrees Celsius. And we say 37 degrees Celsius because we kind of have some information and knowledge about the action of enzymes. And to some extent, they work nominally at 37 degrees Celsius. Well, maybe yeast, for example. So we set it up to compare what we get with that, right? So how we, we conduct this thing? And we want to make this very simple. And remember, you must write this in prison command tense. So the first thing you want to do is set up your experiment, your apparatus as shown below, your apparatus and materials. And you're going to place the mixture immediately in the water bath at five degrees Celsius. It should have come up, but it has not come up as yet. Then you're going to record the volume of CO2 produced after five minutes, okay? And then you're gonna repeat steps one to three at 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, or much ever you want to go up to degrees centigrade. And this is your um, setup. So you set up your apparatus like that. Notice you have a gas syringe, you have a reaction mixture with 10 grams of glucose and five grams of yeast in aqueous media, all right? So you're using those two things. And of course, the steps are there. You would put it in five degrees Celsius of water bath and then repeat that. You then record your results. We already say you record your results, right? Um, and so that's your method, really, right? So what do we expect to happen? If you remember, your expected results is what the observations you expect to see based on your hypothesis, right? So what we expect to see is that it is expected, first of all, we write it like that. It's not definite, it's not a must. So we don't say this is gonna happen because we don't know for sure. We are only saying it is expected based on our hypothesis because it may not happen, something else could happen. It is expected that the volume of CO2 collected at high and low temperatures will be less than the amount collected at nominal temperatures. So this is what we expect to see, all right? Now, what is the data to be collected? Well, since we're gonna be measuring temperatures, well, we are gonna collect the temperatures um, from five to 60 here. Of course, you could go up to higher numbers if you want, and the volume of CO2 um, over here in milliliters, centimeters cube, um, whatever the case might be. So those are the things that we're collecting. We're collecting the volume and um, the temperature which we're using, right? You could even plot a graph about this and see how it looks. Okay, um, sources of error slash limitations. Um, uh, remember, these two things may be seen as interchangeable. Um, and if you have any difficulty getting your source of errors, sources of errors, limitations, or assumptions, you can check out my other video, which is right here at the top right now. So um, those are your sources of error. What are those things really? You know, maintaining an accurate temperature in the water bath via the thermos. Um, via thermostat and the heating filament, that may not be possible. Um, it, it could fluctuate from time to time. It could get heat, it could heat up and then the temperature falls, but it maintains it within a certain range. But still, changing the temperature, since you're measuring temperature, you're expecting and hoping that it will remain at that temperature. But that could be something that's affecting your experiment. Um, you could have dead yeast in your five grams. It's supposed to be five grams because we did use five grams. Um, you, you could have dead yeast in that. And you're thinking, okay, this is 10 grams of yeast. It's all alive. Or sorry, five grams of yeast, it's all alive. It may not necessarily be true. Okay. So therefore, you would not have all of that um, available for the reaction. If you are using an uncalibrated analytical balance, then that could also give you some um, bad results, or let's not say bad, but in, inaccurate results or unprecise results, right? So then now, what are our assumptions? What are we assuming? And um, you get these, this sort of information from the same video I mentioned earlier about um, sources of error limitations and assumptions. So what are we assuming? We're assuming that the temperature for each water bath remains relatively constant. So we're, that's what we're testing and we're hoping that it doesn't shift too much. We are also hoping um, that the same amount of yeast is used for each reaction. Remember, I did say that you could have dead yeast in it. So therefore, you're hoping that it could, it, um, it's, it's the same amount that you're using each time. Right. Um, we're also hoping that pressure is constant and that the surface area of the reactants is the same for each reaction. So surface area affects 
the rate of a reaction. So therefore, you don't want to use different surface area materials for each of the reactions because that's going to play a part in our, it's going to affect the results that you're getting. So we're going to assume that it's the same. We measure it and we're not assuming any powder or any clumping or anything like that. All right. And so therefore, we're assuming those sorts of things. So there you have it, really, um, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you guys for watching. I hope this video has been helpful and I hope it will help on uh, you or even one person in doing their enzymatic lab. So thank you for watching and please like, share, subscribe to the channel and uh, all the best. See you next time.